we all read so much in the newspapers. We hear about the enormity of the refugee crisis. And I think there's both a lot of lack of understanding sitting in the United States as to what this actually means, what this actually looks like. But on the other side of the coin, what we as individuals can do about this, I think sitting there, it, it, it's hard to understand that. So I want to come here, actually see on the ground what this looks like, the very human face of the crisis, and hopefully learn from there what I can do. What I really want to better understand is what this actually means for the countries that are facing so much on the front lines of the refugee crisis. So many people hear about crises in the Middle East and in this region, instability, but it doesn't really affect us personally. All that I know about refugee camps are photos in the news, um, these terrifying stories. Um, you know, what I hope to understand are you know, the real human stories to the refugees. I imagine that they could just be people like me who were born in a different country and just were forced out of their homes and out of their country because of political instability and now are living completely different lives and trying to make things work in a new country and a new home. The group that we've brought here to Lebanon are individual and corporate members of our council whose support makes our work possible. And we brought them to Lebanon to examine the situation of refugees in the Middle East as a result of the Syrian war and a number of other conflicts the crisis group covers. So I've been involved with the Ambassador Council for about two years and have been really eager and excited to come and see ICG's work on the ground. Uh, the refugee situation is also obviously near and dear to my heart given the work that I'm doing. The trip was incredibly relevant to Crisis Group's core mission in the sense that we had a blend of meetings both in the capital city with officials, with UN agencies, and we took day trips to places like Baalbek in the Bekaa Valley, which has a high proportion of refugees, and to Tripoli in the north where tensions have been quite high. And we really saw all the different groups in Lebanon and how refugee and the influx of refugees is having an effect on local community dynamics and national and regional dynamics as well. It's, it's just quite sad that you know, there are so many refugees and 80% are women and children, a large majority are children. And only a few of them can be educated in these schools. Um, the school that we're visiting right now, it manages to teach 650 children. They split into morning shifts and afternoon shifts. Um, but still, there's almost 300 children on the wait list to go to school between the ages of 6 and 12. And this isn't even middle school or high school or or even secondary school beyond that, it's just basic primary education and um, not everyone has access to basic education. Visiting refugees in the Bekaa Valley was an incredible experience. I, I, I think anything that you read, you, you read statistics, you read numbers, you hear hundreds of thousands, millions, um, but actually seeing these informal settlements scattered across the landscape was Theoretically, you know that's the case, but to see that is an absolutely incredible thing. And we had the opportunity to, to meet with and interact with and see some of these refugees, including in, in schools and in other situations where there are international organizations and local organizations that are doing incredible work. Um, and that was absolutely incredible to see. After meeting with the Lebanese government today, I think one of the main things I take away is there's extremely limited capacity to deal with this situation. And it, you know, the use of words like implosion is something that people are very realistically talking about. There's obviously a major humanitarian situation, but at the same time, we have to think about this in terms of stability, in terms of the risk that is posted to the state. This is a country that, is, that has experienced civil war and, and very real civil conflict in recent years. And these are real problems that could reemerge as this situation continues. And that's the other thing that everyone has made clear to us. This is a long-term situation. Even if the Syrian war ended tomorrow, for the foreseeable future, this situation will go on in some form, and that is going to continue to pose risks to the Lebanese state, society, and the region as a whole. And we are here in Lebanon right at a time when we've seen how local events can impact regional events, can impact international events. Right before we got here, we've seen major development in Saudi Arabia with a shakeup of the government and the, the political structure. We've seen the decision by Saudi Arabia to have the Lebanese Prime Minister resign with big implications in terms of the institutional stability in Lebanon and in terms of what direction Lebanon will take. And we've seen the firing of a missile from Yemen 
into Saudi Arabia with, again, both local in terms of the, the well-being of the Yemeni people and the Saudi people, but also regional in terms of a potential conflict between Saudi Arabia and Iran, and international in terms of potential U.S. involvement and Israeli involvement, all coming from local grievances, local conflict that then get conflated with and instrumentalized by regional and international actors. The timing of our delegation to Lebanon really came at a critical moment. This whole week has been an incredible opportunity for both members of the Ambassador Council as well as staff from the crisis group to meet with uh, leading political figures in Lebanon who have shared their insight, um, both with regards to the immediate impact of the Prime Minister's resignation earlier in the week, as well as potential prospects moving forward. Um, so this week has been a reminder that there's a collective failure of the international community to fully support the adequate or necessary mechanisms to address armed conflict, whether that be to actually prevent or mitigate armed conflict. Many of us came in with differing sense and understanding of the politics, both in Lebanon as well as in the overall region. To, but to have the context of personally experiencing it while also having experts to really break it down and help us understand how uh, Iran and Saudi influenced Lebanon, how the Hezbollah and uh, Israeli conflict has influenced the entire region, and give, it to, it, give us that in sort of bite-sized pieces was invaluable. We know the indicators uh, of peaceful societies. Um, and yet the political will, and we see that here within the Lebanon context, is, is unwilling to invest in sustainable peace. Uh, and there's an overemphasis on traditional security perspectives and an overemphasis of, on a military approach. Um, so for me, that's been one of the big messages that I'm taking away. The, the true value of what Crisis Group provides and what thus we have been exposed to on this trip is the reality that everyone has perspectives. And whether or not you agree with those perspectives or, or you want to treat them as valid, you have to acknowledge that they exist and that people have a variety of viewpoints. And in a situation as complex and volatile as Lebanon, there are myriad perspectives that you have to take into account to better understand how these different actors are going to be interacting.